Jesus' name. Um, as, as we are preparing the word, I do want to encourage you. We are in what we call intercession with the Most High to see, meaning that we're in between our go-through sessions. And during that period, we're going to be doing some unique things. I do want you all to still do your homework at the end of the uh, lesson that we give out, um, but you can also go and download at victoriouspage.org slash sermon. Um, I always give out my sermon notes because I want you to study, not be impressed by me, but be impressed to study what God has given me. And uh, answer the questions. We'll come back out on Wednesday, even though we're not in group. We're going to be doing some unique things. Last week we did a little skit and uh, had a round table discussion. We know we're going to be doing the discussions with different groups. So I want you to come out prepared this Wednesday having taken about 10, 15 minutes to study what God has given us, and let's grow closer. We grow deeper at Victorious Praise, and we grow closer. As with the fourth chapter, the first verse says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity build the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, look at this, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said to them, let us, now the, who's talking here is the people that don't like them, who are their enemy. Let us build with you, for we seek your God, as you do. We do sacrifice unto him since the days of S. Sahardan, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua, and the rest of the chief of the priests of the Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land, who is this? The same, the weak, the ones who were trying to tell them, we with you, those adversaries, weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And in the reign of Ashur, in the beginning of his reign, wrote them unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem, their capital city. By the time we get to verse 24, and you can read all those verses in between as part of your assignment this week, their plot apparently looked like it worked. Because by verse 24, as it says, then cease the work. It got started. Dang. Then cease the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. I go to Isaiah 40 and 29 real quickly. Isaiah 40 and 29. It says, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, so in this is our second series of the year. The first series we talked about reviving, bringing life back to us. And this is something that God gave me as the theme this year, Rebuild, Revive, and Restore. This is about the sixth message or so of rebuilding. For the children of Israel, it was a special time because 70 years earlier, they had went into captivity. Their city had been burned. Their temple had been destroyed. And although false prophets were telling them it wasn't going to happen, it did happen. But God said, I got a plan. And in 70 years, we're going to rebuild. I want to explain to you why God allowed them to get torn down like that, why we rebuild and restore and build better. 
Well, now they're in that rebuild process. And up to now, things have been going. Even though they were in the middle of their enemy, they rebuilt the altar. They went through some sacrifices to pray to God. They rebuilt the foundation. And it's solid so they can build up. But while they are building, those enemies are still there. And, and I, I, I find it interesting that sometimes you can get excited and motivated about your new job or something. You feel like things are coming back and they're looking at you. You got to jump in and start building. And um, you, you feel like you hear anybody ever felt like that people are plotting against you. And then they try to make you think you crazy. Oh, you just paranoid. Uh, I heard somebody say, well, I may be paranoid, but that don't mean you ain't out to get me. <laughs> Y'all ain't working with me. You might be paranoid, but that still don't mean you ain't out to get me. David said this. Jesus picked it up later in the New Testament. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs on my head. They that would destroy me being my enemies wrongfully, meaning that I have not done anything to you. And yet, you hate me and you're plotting against me. Wrongfully, you are mighty and want me to fix that which I did not break. He said here, then I restored that which I took not away. This is where we find the children of Israel at. They've overcome the 70 years of bondage. They are the first remnants of those that are going back to their destroyed land to rebuild the city, rebuild the temple. They've been called. They've been anointed. They've been blessed. They received prosperity. They fought through a lot of the stuff to get here. And yet, their enemy is relentless. He's relentless. He starts out with a plot to undermine what they're doing. The plot is to come in as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Let us help you. Mm. To undermine the work. This inevitably leads to attack, which delays the work. Eventually, as we will see, they actually were successful and stopped the work. They stopped it. Here becomes our challenge. You know that God is with you and started you and created something in you. But then these things, these headwinds and these obstacles and these plots come against you. And you are discouraged and disheartened cause you to step away or walk away or give up. So what we want to do is how do you answer this question? How do you rebuild when everything looks like it's been stopped? How do you keep rebuilding when there are plots against you, things are being delayed or just stopped all together? My message is entitled today, Rebuilding During the Delay. Rebuilding. Say that with me. Rebuilding during the delay. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not a denial. It's not a denial. Uh, I, I, I know it looked like everything been shut down. Nothing going on. It's not a denial. Three points I want you to look at today. The plot, the attack. And the stoppage. Rebuilding doing the plot. Verse 3 of our lesson text, the Bible says, But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the priests of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build and house unto God, but we ourselves will build unto God of Israel. A plot is defined as a scheme, a subversion, a conspiracy. It is a plan made in secret by a group of people who are looking to do something illegal or harmful. And one of the things I want you to understand as 
the body of Christ, that anytime God gives you a work, especially a work to redo or to rebuild, there will always be conspirators to stop you, to hold you back, to keep you down where you are, to subvert, to undermine what God has called you to do. The first couple of verses, the plot was, let us help you. Let me tell you, all help ain't good help. Let us help you. All help ain't good help. You know, African Americans have been through some stuff, right? But when the government started offering us that free cheese and free money, it looked like help, didn't it? But they told us, but you got to get rid of the man. Y'all ain't going to work with him. Look at your neighbor and say, all help ain't good help. You can have all the free cheese and, and checks you want. As a matter of fact, have another kid and we'll give you some more money. All help ain't good help. Y'all don't like me today? The question is not whether or not the enemy is out to get you or to stop you. He is. The question is, what are you going to do about it? He's plotting. He's looking to undermine you. Jesus said, behold, I send forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. If I'm sending you out in the midst of wolves, you got to understand wolves are going to be wolves now. They'll dress up. My good, this fleece you have. <laughs> Boy, cheese thicker than you over there. What big paws you have for a missionary scouting your church. <laughs> for a preacher. Ah, somebody say all help ain't good help. He said, beware, Jesus says, of men, for they will deliver you up to the council and will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given unto you that same I want to speak. Uh, when, when I was reading this and studying this, what came to me is I remember in school, I was we had to study as part of our studies Greek mythology. And I remembered this phrase, beware of Greeks offering gifts. Beware of Greeks offering gifts. It was the, the story of the Trojan horse. Some of y'all probably remember that. And, and in this story, the, the enemy cannot get past this wall. And so instead of trying to fight them, he says, well, let's just act like the war is over and offer them a peace offering of this big horse. They readily open up the gates and bring in this Trojan horse, not knowing in the belly of the horse, preach, Pastor Will, our armed soldiers who would ultimately lead to the destruction because I can't destroy you from out, but if I offer you some goodies and you let me in, If, you can, if I can get inside, if I can get in what you're doing, let me help you. So uh, the, 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 uh, the Proverbs 29 and 5, the message Bible says, a flattering neighbor is up to no good. Anytime somebody keeps telling you how good you are, let me tell you, you, you really ain't, you ain't all that good. You so good looking, you ain't all that good looking. Nah, nah, nah. They, they keep flattering you over and over and over. Nah, hold on. <laughs> you know, I did get my hair done, but I ain't all that now. Yeah, a flattering neighbor is up to no good. He's probably planning to take advantage of you. To rebuild doing the plot. Uh, uh, you must learn how to be wise as a serpent and still harmless as a dove. 
In other words, you know how you gotta have to look at the devil and say, "This is my free will. I'm good." When he offer you his stuff, it may be enticing, boy. That little extra check, boy. I could really use that check right now to help me with this rent. <laughs> Y'all ain't working with me. I could really use that little extra piece of money. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm good. You have to learn how to say, no thanks, I'm good. Because the enemy has a plot. Yeah, preach right here. But you're going to have to remember, he may have a plot, but God has a plan. The enemy has a plot. And you must understand, he's plotting against you. You might be paranoid, but he is out to get you. He is out to kill you. The thief comes but to, to steal, to kill, and destroy. He ain't trying to help me. He's trying to destroy me. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you have a plot. See, they plotted against you yesterday, but God had a plan for you before you ever got here. Uh, see, my plan is older than your plot. You, you came up with that man. When did you come up with that? Yesterday? Last week? Uh, last month. I got you. I see what you're trying to do. But God had a plan 70 years earlier. I'm a preach right here. You coming up with this plot today. But God knew your plot before you even knew your plot. And had a plan to get me through it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. He said, for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. They going to plot. I'm preaching to somebody up in here, but God has a plan. Now, doing that plot is, is going to frustrate you, and I really got to get to the next point. But God says, even when you feel disheartened, even when you feel weakened, unless in text says he giveth power to the faint. Uh, am I preaching to somebody that's sick and tired of all of this crap and sick and tired of all of these plots? I always got to watch my back. always got to do this. Uh, well, that's all right. When you feel weak, God gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He will increase your strength. Uh, and this is how you got to do to the enemy. Mm, Jesus said, uh, hallelujah, David said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. I mean, I know that check looked good. Uh, I know you told me you could help me out with the rent. I just got to come in and let you sleep with me a little bit. Uh, I'm preaching in this place. Uh, hallelujah. Just let you uh, take the bedroom down the down the. Oh, y'all still ain't working with me. You got to learn how to tell the enemy, I'm good. Uh, if I was hungry, uh, I wouldn't even tell you. And yes, that Coke and a Happy Meal look pretty good when you're hungry. Uh, but I still wouldn't even tell you. Uh, why? Uh, because the other earth is the Lord's uh, and the fullness thereof. Uh, when I need a meal, God gonna get me a meal. I may be hungry right now, uh, but I learn how to be hungry. Uh, I learn how to live when I'm on the top and when I'm on the bottom. Baby, I can eat filet mignon uh, and I can get me some spam and be all right. Y'all ain't working with me. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I, I, I can live off of that. I'd have some sardines, uh, you know, with, with the red sauce and, uh, and, and the mustard sauce. I can open up a can. Uh, Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. But if I was hungry, uh, I still wouldn't take what you have. See, that's learning how to be wise as a serpent, uh, but harmless uh, as a dove. Uh, why? Because my God uh, shall supply uh, all my need. God knew I was going to be hungry today. Uh, God knew uh, that I was going to be in this situation. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God uh, is the one uh, that created uh, the blessing blacksmith that made the weapons that the army that's coming against me is trying to use. And if God created them, then he must have created a solution for me to overcome them. That's why I say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Y'all give God a praise right there. So not only am I rebuilding during the plot, I need y'all to understand he still won't stop. You turn down his schemes. You peek him out. I'm, I'm peeking you. I see what you're trying to do. Offer me a little help. I see that. And when you peek that out uh, and you realize and the, and, the, and, the, and, you, and the enemy know that you know that he know that you know what he's trying to do, it won't stop him. 
the Bible says once they pick out the plot, he just goes to the next level. In verse 4, he said, then the adversary, the enemy of the land, weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days while they were building. The enemy said, okay, I can't, the plot ain't working, so let me just come right out and let you know. I don't like you, and I'm trying to get you fired. I'm working directly against you. Oh, preach right here. Uh, see, sometimes he'll just let you know, no, I don't like you. Then act like he didn't say it when you bring it up at the meeting. I'm going to preach right here. When the plot doesn't work, uh, the enemy will come in with an all-out attack. Uh, and although it seems like the attack uh, is going to destroy you, what it really does is it weakens, troubles, and frustrates you. See, the enemy actually cannot destroy you, huh? but he can uh, delay you. He can uh, frustrate you. He can weaken you. Huh? Preach right here. Weaken means to discourage you. Huh? To trouble you is to keep you occupied with the drama he keeps bringing up. Huh? Uh -huh. I need y'all to get this. Uh, to frustrate you and get you to a point of aggravation. Huh? And the reason why I say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Huh? Hallelujah. No tongue spoken against you huh? shall forward is because God's plan was always for you to succeed, uh, but his attacks. Uh, see, when God says no weapon formed against you, he didn't mean that there wouldn't be any weapons. Uh, he just said that they would not ultimately work. Uh, let me preach to you all, because uh, some of y'all are losing your mind because you keep getting hit on the left and the right uh, as if God was supposed to get rid of the weapons. No, he never said that. He said that they wouldn't work. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, but that don't mean it won't hurt. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah, it's, it's going to hurt. Uh, hallelujah. Let, 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 let me uh, hit you in your stomach when you ain't paying attention. Oh, yo, you're going to double up. I don't care how saved you are. Uh, I don't care how much anointment you have. Uh, let me hit you when you're not expecting it. Uh, let me destroy. Let me attack your home and attack your family. And attack your children. Attack your finances. Uh, attack your job. Attack your ministry. Oh, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to feel that. Uh, you're going to feel that. Mm, preach right here. Uh, the attack will not prosper, but it will cause you pain. It will cause you delay. It will discourage you. Many are the afflictions. That's the reason why there are so many, because I can't destroy you, but I can keep you preoccupied with troubles. We are troubled on every shot. I thought I had gotten rid of this and dealt with that when I had peeked out your plot. But now you're just troubling me. The Bible talks about a time when they were building the wall that they had to have a, 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 a shovel in one hand and a sword in the other. Now anytime you look at that and think about that, if half your time you got to fight, then that means that you ain't working. I'm a preach right here. And so if I got to always be on guard, it's going to create a delay. I can't work as hard as I can because I got to keep fighting your crap and fighting your mess. And so it creates delays. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I could have been done with this a long time ago, but I got to keep fighting this mess. I'm troubled on every side, yet not distressed, but I am troubled. I am, I am persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Oh, preach right there. I'm perplexed. That means I'm confused. I don't even know why it keeps happening. And yet it keeps happening. Uh, and so we are troubled. And then we just go right into outright frustrations. Uh, hallelujah. There's one prophet in the Bible that says, it is enough. You know what he was saying? I'm sick and tired of this crap. Uh, I'm sick and tired uh, of every time I turn around uh, trouble. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, am I preaching to at least three of y'all? Because the rest of y'all look like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but am I preaching to anybody uh, that would get to your point and you say, it's enough, God. I, it's just so much. Uh, I can't take it. Why are you allowing this to happen? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm frustrated. Uh, God says uh, that the Lord is nigh unto them which are of a 
broken heart and a contrite spirit. We know what a broken heart is, but a contrite spirit means that they didn't beat you down so much that your spirit has become crushed. You're still there, but you ain't. You don't have that life like you used to have. You don't have that excitement like you used to have. You go to the job, but you ain't excited about being there anymore. You show up to church, but you ain't got that dance and that hop and that giddy up like you used to have. You're just going through the motions because your spirit has been crushed. Three people say, been there, been there, been there, been there. Don't act. I know you got a smile on your face, but you've been there. How do I know you've been there? Because that's the reason why Christ came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's the poor in spirit, that broken spirit where you're there, but you don't feel it. Hallelujah. To heal the broken heart. Where my broken heart people in here at? Oh, hallelujah. My heart has been broken over and over. To those that are in captivity, dealing with generational curses and strongholds and addictions, and you want to get out, but you can't get out because you've been in prison. He said, I've been anointed for the blind. You keep making the same mistake with the same old joker over and over because you've been blinded and you can't see. And of, of those that are bruised because you it's happened to you so much that it's happening and happening and happening. So much so that the Bible in our second lesson text said, even the youth shall fail and be weary. Why did he say that about the youth? Because our youth are strong ones. Our youth are the ones that can go get it. Hallelujah. You don't see a 70-year-old boxer. Hallelujah. He didn't have his day. You see a 20-year-old boxer because he's got his vitality and he's strong and he can go get it. Oh, preach right there. Them runners and those football players, they are strong and young and they can go get it and they can hit it. But God says there's a place that even the young folks say, I can't take it no more. Even the youth say, I've lost my strength. I'm about to lose my mind. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. The enemy creates delays, and he creates delays. But look at your neighbor and say, a delay is still not a denial. I'm working harder and harder to get less and less, but it's still not a denial. I see even the young people quitting. The young folk don't want to go to church no more. The youth are giving up. But they that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. God said even in your old age, even though you see the young people giving up, he said if you learn how to wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. And you shall walk and not not faint. I want to speak to somebody that then got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hallelujah. You peeked out the plot, but now he's coming at your left and right, at home and at church, in your job and in your finances. He's coming in your ministry, but God said, they that wait upon the Lord. I don't know when it's going to happen. It looked like everything is been delayed, but I will trust in the Lord until I die. Yeah! Look at the neighbor and say, I ain't dead yet, so I'm going to stand right here and wait. I'm getting a little slow. I can't do it like I used to do it, but I'm still not dead yet, and so I've been delayed. It was supposed to happen in my 30s, but now I'm in my 60s, but baby, I'm still here. I'm still here, and I'm working, even though it's taking longer. And let us not be weary. 
in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't care how old you are, just don't faint, just don't give up. He didn't delay it, but stay right there. Caleb said, I should have had this 40 years ago, but y'all wouldn't let me. Y'all troubled me. Y'all told me the giants were too big. Y'all told me the walls were too high. And I've been delayed for 40 years. But they that wait. They that wait upon the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, no matter what, just keep waiting. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you stop. But wait. Caleb said, I'm as strong at 80 as I was at 40. Give me this mountain. It may be 40 years later, but I can still do it. I can still fight it. I can still get it. Somebody give God a praise right there. Come on, praise him. Y'all get on your feet and say, I can still do it. I've been delayed, but it's still coming. I've been delayed, but I'm going to still wait on God. I've been delayed. Oh, Lord. I don't care how long it takes. Wait on your home. Wait on your marriage. Wait on your job. Joy, wait on your strength. Mount up with wings as eagles. Fly over it. Get them running shoes on. Run. Can't run like I used to, but I can still pick them up. I can still pick them up. Can't jump as high as I used to, but I can still walk with the best of them. I can still do a slide. I can still move these old bones. Somebody scream and praise him. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil ain't finished yet. He still ain't done. You would think after all this that he would go somewhere. But Satan's on my track trying to turn me back. He did the plot, but I didn't let him get away with it. I've told the devil that's all right. I'm good. Even if I'm hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Look at three people and say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. They walked out on me, but I'm good. They left me, but I'm good. I'm good. Well, then he just came right out, told me he didn't like me, attacked me, delayed me, but God told me to wait on him and I kept waiting somebody scream I kept waiting I kept waiting I kept waiting saying God's gonna turn it around God's gonna fix it God's gonna do it and just when you think God's gonna do it stop it work stop it look at your neighbor and say neighbor after 20 years of hell, I'm about to get it. Not the whole thing done shut down. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I put up with this mess on my job, and I prayed, I fasted, I touched and agreed, and I still got fired. Am I preaching to at least three people in here? I let, anointed the job, anointed the bed, anointed the kids, and it still stopped. Somebody scream, work stop it. It ain't just for plot. It ain't just delayed. But the whole job site done shut down. 
Somebody scream, shut down. Now, if you wasn't discouraged during the delay, what are you going to do when the whole thing just falls apart? What are you going to do when you're walking out with your box, with your few belongings? What are you going to do then? How many of us can survive that? Boy, I'm a preach in this place. Didn't God put me on this job and I'm walking out with a box under my arm? Didn't God put me in this home and they done left me? Can I preach to five people up in this place? Somebody scream, work stoppage. The whole thing, the Bible says, then cease the work. How could God allow the whole thing to stop? Grab three people and say, how could God allow it to stop? How could God allow it to stop? How could God allow the devil to get victory? How could God allow this to happen when everything stops? When the enemy wants me to lose total confidence in God, sometimes the whole thing will shut. See, let me tell you how the enemy works. He will bite off his nose just to spite his face. Y'all ain't going to work with a brother in this place. Somebody say it done all stopped. And when you get to this place, the devil is telling you, go home. Because it ain't going to work. You done lost everything. He's trying to make you lose your confidence. Well, maybe God didn't call me. Can I preach to five people? Maybe he didn't give me the job. Can I preach to ten people over here? Well, maybe I got it wrong. Somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor you didn't get it wrong you didn't get it wrong it is just the devil wants you to lose your confidence the devil wants you to give up on God to stop believing in the God of the Bible when you reach a work stoppage look at your neighbor and say neighbor even when it stops it still ain't finished even when it stopped, it still ain't done. Even when he shut down and is laughing at you, laughing at you as you're walking out. Somebody scream, I'm going to get my last laugh now. I'm going to get it. The devil wants me to lose my confidence. I kept on reading and the Bible said that the work ceased. Oh, Lord. The work stopped in Jerusalem, so it ceased unto the second year. And I said to myself, well, let me read that in the New Living Translation, because I'm trying to figure out why would God allow it to cease? Why would God allow it to stop? So I moved over to the New Living Translation, and I saw that that word unto was a different word and that word was until somebody anybody say until I need somebody three of y'all didn't get it right now until see the devil wants you to think that when it stops that the stop is forever when it stops and you lose it that the loss is forever but somebody say until until that's a conjunction and that conjunction says whatever you did before it it don't work after it God said everybody in here has an until coming your way you stop me until until he said until the second year of the next king let me preach to three people that it went through a stoppage, that it went through a loss, went through a firing. I want you to know that there is an until coming your way. I know you're broke. 
until I know you're hurt until I know you're disgusted, frustrated, and discombobulated until my heart is broken until David said, Lord, I know you're good, but as for me, I almost quit. I almost gave up because I kept seeing the enemy prospering. I kept seeing the wicked getting ahead. I kept seeing people getting ahead that wasn't doing right. I almost gave up. I almost quit. It all stopped for me, but he kept on going. He complained for 16 verses. Who am I talking to? That didn't complain. Why me, Lord? Why me, God? But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hang on in there until when we get down to the 17th verse, David said, I almost quit. I almost gave up until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord. Then understood I therein. In other words, saints, there is a place in God that has your until, until, until God turns it around. I ain't getting nothing. But I know what, I'm still alive. And if I'm still alive, I'm like Job. All the days of my appointed time will I wait until, until, until my change comes. It may be next week, it may be next month, it may be next year, but I, I will wait wait until somebody jump up and look at three people and say until 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 my change comes until my breakthrough comes until my healing comes until my deliverance comes until my joy comes until my money comes until I break every curse until I get it all back yeah yeah people and tell them you got an until coming you got an until coming go to them and say God has not forgotten you until you get your breakthrough until you get your joy back until you get your job back until yeah yeah on your feet. I wish three people would just start praising God right there. I wish three people would say, I got an until shout. I got an until praise. I got an until joy. I got an until prayer.
Everybody get on your feet. Everybody get on your feet and say until I'm getting it all back. I will wait until I get my joy. Just wait until. I wish I could get three people that would praise God until you get your help. That would praise God until you get your anointing. That will praise him. is your confidence in God. He plotted to try to fool you. He attacked you to make you get weary, and he stopped the work to get you to lose your confidence. But somebody say this with me. Being confident, Be confident. of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in me will perform it. God's going to perfect everything concerning me. Get three people a high five and say, I got my confidence back. I'm not going to lose it. I don't care how long. I don't care how much. I will not stop. I will not quit. I'm confident. straight up in the air. Now the first thing you can be confident in is that God, we're about to pray. Here's the first level of confidence. God hears your prayers. 
John said, this is my confidence that if I ask anything according to the will of God, that God hears me. Somebody scream, God hears me. Come on, say it out loud. God hears me. You're about to pray. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know God hears you. I don't know what plot's coming against you. I don't know how much you've been delayed. I don't even know what's been stopped in your life. But when you pray, God hears you. Maybe you didn't get the answer you was looking for, but that's all right. God still heard you. Somebody scream, God hears me. And I'm confident that he knows. He knows. He knows. I know you thought it was going to kill you, but baby, you're still here. I know you thought you was going to die, but you're still breathing. You're in the house of the Lord. You're in the sanctuary. So I'm confident that God hears me. The second thing I'm confident of is that if he started it, he will finish it. Somebody say that with me. I'm confident that whatever God started, he's going to finish it. He which hath begun a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm confident he hears me. I'm confident he's going to finish his work. Now, this is the part that really got me. I ain't even finished myself yet. There's still work to be done in me. But God says, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I don't know how it's going to work, but everybody say, I'm confident that God will perfect me and everything concerning me. Lift those hands up high. Lift those hands up high. The enemy wants you to stop praying because you lost your confidence. He wants you to stop coming to church because you lost your confidence. He wants you to give in because you lost your confidence. Well, maybe I need to take their help because my help didn't walk out the door. No, don't lose your confidence and go for that okey-doke plot of the devil. Don't lose your confidence. If you're hungry, just be hungry. God going to supply my needs. I don't need the help of the devil. I don't need the help of the enemy. I'm confident. And even though it's being delayed, it ain't denied. It's not denied. And even if it got shut completely down, I'm still alive. That means there is an until yet to surface in my life. Hold those hands up high. Say, Lord Jesus, you promised to perfect everything concerning me. So today, whether it's a plot, whether it's a delay, or even a stoppage, I am confident, I am confident that you're going to finish the work. Say, Lord, anything in my life that's causing the delay, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me, save me. Say, Lord, I'm not going to worry about the enemy. He's going to do what he's going to do. But I'm confident that you're going to do what you promised to do. Now hold those hands up high. Father, in the name of Jesus, you gave us a word today that even when it shuts down, it still ain't done. It still ain't finished. It still is not done. There he is a rebuild in my life. There is a restart in my life. There is an until that's yet to even happen in my life. But Lord, I thank you for the saints of God that will take this word and put it in their heart and walk out of here confidently knowing that you've begun a work and you're going to finish it in the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe that prayer, you believe that word, give God a thunderous praise right there. Come on, clap those hands. I saw God dealing with several of you all. I saw God healing several of you. I saw God 
delivering your mind, delivering your heart, delivering your soul, delivering your spirit. Hey! Everything else didn't stop. The whole job didn't shut down. But I won't quit. I won't give up. I won't go back. And I'll stay right here until. I think they had to wait over two years. The enemy thought he had the victory. Shut the job down. God still worked it out. Go to three people and say, God's still going to work it out. God's still going to work it out. Go look at somebody and tell them, sister, God's going to work it out in your life. Come on, let them know. Let them know. Let them know. I want to touch and agree with you. He's working it out. He's working it out. you to come to the altar, but today I just want you to come to the altar right there in your heart. Sometimes you got to have a pocket altar. You can go to God right where you are. Sometimes you got to go to the altar on your job. You got to go to the altar in your heart. You got to go to the altar at your house. When it looks like the whole thing is done, go to the altar. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, I'm going to pray the prayer of salvation. If you do know him, but you've been disheartened or discouraged. Just go to the altar. We didn't already build that. Just go to God. Every head is bowed. Every head is bowed. We're getting ready to pray the prayer of salvation. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I want you to know the same God that delivered me can deliver you. The same God that kept me can keep you. Maybe you're a backslider. You said, you know what? This just ain't working. You fell for the okey-doke of the devil. But God is still alive. And nothing the enemy does can ever totally prosper when you get God on your side. I'm getting ready to pray the prayer of salvation. It's the same prayer I prayed over 40 years ago. You can pray that same prayer. You can walk in total victory and deliverance even while you're waiting. I'm going to ask everybody that does not know God as your personal Savior to pray this first prayer with me. Those that have already accepted Christ, I want you to come along with the rest of us and pray with us. So here's what I want. Everybody in the sanctuary to lift both hands straight up towards heaven. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for my sins, and you rose again. This day, I receive salvation. Now, everybody pray this. Say, Lord, I have fallen short. I've made mistakes. I've given in to some stuff. But today, I take my victory back. I take my calling back. I take my anointing back. Say, Lord, my until is here today, and I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Now, Father, fill us with your spirit. Let us know that we can be confident. Even when we fall, we can get up with confidence. Even when we fail, we can get up with confidence. Today, we are saved. Today, you have started something that you're going to finish. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody clap those hands real hard for Jesus. Clap those hands real hard for Jesus. Bless the Lord. Look at me. Was there anybody that accepted Christ today as your Savior? Today you said, I'm getting saved. Today I'm getting what Pastor Will has. If you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, 
I just want you to identify that and make the devil a liar in your life. Just say, today I got saved by raising that right hand. Just say, today I accepted Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, if I'm already saved, then I get that. But if you accepted Christ today, just wave that right hand. Hallelujah. Y'all give God a great big hand. Praise you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. You may be seated. Listen, we're a little over, but I want to thank y'all. Did y'all get a good word today? I can't hear you. Did you get a good word today? Well, if you want to give me real joy, don't just say I got a good word. Do something about it. There's something I want you to do about it is to take my notes, study them, answer the questions on the last page of the notes. Those that are streaming, go to goodchoicepraise.org slash sermons. Goodchoicepraise.org slash sermons. Download my notes. On the last page, you'll see a little lesson plan. Probably familiar with Sunday school. Similar to that. Answer those questions. Come back with your answers this Wednesday. Come back with your answers this Wednesday. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to show you what we've learned. We're going to hear other people and their take on it. Because we that are strong bear the infirmities of the weak. God wants us to be together. Not just associates, but actual brothers and sisters. This is how we are changed. We come back on Bible study and we connect with our brothers and our sisters. We connect with our brothers and sisters. So while we're in intercession, I want you all to make an effort. Don't just wait on your groceries. Just come back and join us. We're going to have a round table discussion. We're going to ask you some questions. You can give us your answers if you choose to. But we want you to hear what other people are thinking so we can all grow together. We can all grow together in our weakness. We can all grow together in our strength. Can somebody give us a clap? Oh, thank you. You reminded me. See, it's time to say open the church doors. <laughs> open the doors. Maybe if he would have knocked and then grabbed the handle and swung the door open, maybe I would have got that. Uh, one, of, one of our dear brothers who's been coming, um, and I believe God said he really used him, said he wants to join the church. There may be somebody in here for his family. Let me tell you, I don't open the doors of the church up a lot. And the reason why I don't is because that's not what I want to do. I used to just try to get as many people to join the church, and God said, that's not what I called you to do. I called you to feed my sheep. Did I feed the sheep today? That's what I called you to do. Whether you join or not, that's up to you. Now, I will tell you, if you're not a part of the body of believers, you should be. You should have brothers and sisters that know your name. You have people know that there's something going on with you. They're looking out for you. You know, we live in this isolated society. Stuff happened to people nobody even knows. They just ain't seen them for three weeks. Um, and I want somebody to know I ain't here. Come check on it, brother. I remember I missed, I overslept. I forgot to tell Siri to wake me up. I got two girls that know me, Siri and Alexa. So I think Siri didn't do her job. So I said, okay, I've got them for you. I went and got Alexa. So I tell Siri to wake me up at 530, and if she forget me, I got Alexa waking me up at 540. That's the way it worked out. One of y'all going to get it right. Uh... And uh, Kwanda, I didn't get up. You know, peeps, I ain't say something wrong. They called. I didn't wake up. They was on their way over to my house. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, you need to have some people that come looking for you when you ain't where you need to be. Some of y'all too isolated. Nobody know you're missing. You be gone for three weeks. What happened? <laughs> y'all ain't worth the wait. Um, and so that's why we encourage people to join our body of believers. Somebody needs to know your middle name. Uh, somebody needs to know you personally. So if you don't have a church home, let me tell you why you might consider this place. Number one, you got to go to a church that feeds you. Did y'all get a good word today? Jesus said we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that word, God uses a pastor to give you wisdom and knowledge. That's God said I chose the foolishness of preaching. That's what God does. The second thing is, is not only must you be at a place where you get the word of God, 
you also need to be at a place where you can connect with people. 